all praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I'm back. It's on. It's not over. So we're going to start here tonight. Matthew, the fourth chapter again. I'm going to start here. I pray that this feed uh, carries on through. Uh, but we know that there may be technical difficulties. I think the weather is a little bad outside. But I'm going to teach from here. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep going from here. Uh, so Matthew, the fourth chapter. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed forth from the mouth of Yah. Yahushua got that word from somewhere. When he was being tested, he had to refer back to something to give him strength to make it through and endure the wilderness test. Because remember, he was in the wilderness. He didn't just make up a word. He already had a word. What word was that? A proceeding word from the mouth of Yah. He had a proceeding word, a word that came from Yah already. What word was that? The word from the Torah. He went back to the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. I was stating first here, and it reads, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah do it man live. Listen to that again. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word, every word, not some words, but every word, not a few words, but every word that proceed or go forth out of the mouth of Yah. That's what we live on. That's what we chew on. Tonight, I'm going to talk about that, the proceeding word of Yahuwah, the proceeding word. Uh, in your life today, a preceding word. We need to keep the word in proper perspective. We're not trying to make the word out of anything but what it is. It is what it is. You keep the word in line, keep the word line up on line, precept on precept, study to show thyself approved accurately and rightly dividing the word of truth. But there's uh, 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 some words in here that we can use. The Bible said the uh, Tanakh and the Torah is for our example. We need an example how to follow. What did Yahushua do? He referred back to the Torah and said, I need this word, the Torah, to get me through this wilderness test that I'm in at this moment. So right now we may be in some type of test or some type of thing you're going through and we need to refer back to the book. Hallelujah. So this preceding word, now I want you to hear this. Now I have some definition. The word preceding means a series of activities or events, happenings, the act of a person or thing that proceeds. Something that's going forth in action, it's taking off. So it's proceeding. Remember, the proceeding word of Yah is what we need, an ongoing word. We don't need Yah to give us a word in the past or in our present. We need a word for our future. We need Yah to continue to speak to us. Because guess what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is our future. It's not the present. Tomorrow is your future. Your past was an hour ago. Right now you're in your presence. Well, I said you're in the present state that you're in. And at another hour from now, that's going to be your future. You see that? That's how, that's how quick it is. That's how fast it is. Your past, your present, and your future. So you, you need a word right now wherever you are. Because every step, every moment, every time we go forward, we need a preceding word to follow us. We need a word to go with us. Right, hallelujah. So the word proceed means to begin or continue a course of action. We need y'all's preceding word. Man should not live just by bread only. Eating all the time, just, just getting full of food and drinks and being merry. No, no. That's like in the time of Noah. They were eating, drinking, and being merry and doing all type of debauchery. But Yah said no. He came and destroyed those people with the flood. And that's the same thing going on today. No, we need to hear from Yahuwah. Hallelujah. We need him to help us to go forward. We need to move forward. Every word, I'm going to start here. I have some, I'm telling you, I have some good scriptures tonight. If you can just follow me. Look, if you're not able to stay, come back and listen to the video. You'll get this presentation in its fullest. I'm going to teach to the end what Yah has given me. I'm not going to rush through. I'm telling you now, it's going to make sense about this preceding word. Every word that Yahuwah allows to come out of his mouth is a sure word. Every word that comes out of Yah's mouth is a sure word is an on-time word, is a, a prosperous word, is a powerful word. Every word that comes out of his mouth. Look, uh, the scripture says uh, that no word will return back void that comes out of his mouth, but it's going to accomplish that what he's sending into. That's Isaiah 55. If he speaks a word, it's not going to return void. We got to get back to keeping the Torah, get back to keeping that Tanakh, 
get back to keeping this uh uh the uh the holy writ the holy scriptures we have to get back to putting this word into action this word we need to put it into action this word is real we need a, a action word today the times that we live in we don't need a word that does land dormant no we need Yah's word which is alive his word would never lie dormant but it's going to accomplish that what he's sending into his word will not return void. Somebody need to hear that right now. I heard y'all say that. Somebody need to hear that. His word won't turn void. Will, will not return void. But it's going to accomplish that what it's sent into. Listen at this. These words will come to pass. His word, every word he speak out of his mouth, going to come to pass. Whether it's a word of promise, a word of covenant, a word of warning, a word of judgment. Anything that y'all speak out of his mouth is going to come to pass. Forgive my hand. I'm just... Moving it as a teaching illustration. It's going to come out of his mouth. If it comes out of his mouth, it's going to happen. Whether it's a promise, covenant, warning, or uh, judgment. Whatever it is, it's going to manifest. So y'all just don't speak just to speak. But he speaks on purpose. Hallelujah. He speaks on purpose. He speaks with specific instructions in mind. Every time he talks, something got to happen. Every time he says something out of his mouth, it's going to take place. Give you a good example. I'm coming back to get you out of the land of your captivity. Is that a lie or is that a promise? That is a promise from y'all that he's coming back to get us. He's going to put us back in our land. Y'all also said, I'm going to destroy the heathens that did you wrong. Is that a lie or is that a promise? That's a promise. He's going to get the heathens. So every word that y'all speaks out of his mouth is going to manifest. Hallelujah. One thing that's guaranteed is that Yahuwah will bring it to pass or cause it to happen or manifest. It's going to happen. It's going to manifest. You look at uh, the uh, word Genesis. The Hebrew word is Barashit. Listen at this. The beginning. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. That's John 1 and 1. But it said, in the beginning, Yah created. I'm going to show you here how Yah said, I have a preceding word. I never stopped talking. Y'all never stopped talking. They talked about the 400 years of silence, but he was still moving in that silence. He was still dealing. He was still coming against folks. He was still dealing with folks in that era. So he never stopped talking. He always speaking. He's always talking, whether you listen or not. That's why the scripture says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach is saying. He's always talking to us. He's always speaking to us. Listen, listen at this word now. Yahuwah said... Genesis 1 and verses 3, 6, 9, 11, 14, 20, 24, 26, and 29. He said, that's what he did in those verses that I just gave you. Just follow with me. Yahuwah said, he had a preceding word. He said in those verses, but watch this. Yahuwah saw and called it what it was after he said what he said in verses 4, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 31. He said, then he saw. Are you catching with me tonight? That's a good word. He said stuff out of his mouth, then he saw what had happened, and he called it to be what it was. Now, Yahuwah created in these verses and made things out of verses 1, 2, 7, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 30. See, a lot of times when you read that word or when you study the scriptures, you have to understand that Yah is making a uh, 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 a word giving us a, such a word that if we just read the surface of the word, we'll miss everything that he's saying. We will we will miss everything that he's saying. No, when Yah says something, you can always expect to see something. Did you hear what I just said? If he says something out of his mouth, you can always expect to see something. He said it. He saw it. He said it, and he created it. He made it to what it is and called it what it should be. That's good right there. So I want to leave you with that. He has a preceding word, man. I'm going to keep quoting it. Shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. Yahushua used that scripture when he was in an all-out warfare in the wilderness with Hasatan. We gonna, you want to understand why he had to live off that preceding word. He couldn't find himself uh, without the word of Yah. He needed that word or he would have been overcome by Ha Satan. So he utilized the word. Most Bible students today cannot explain to you what the Mashiach and his disciples taught from or were, were expounding from when they study or read the set apart scripture. They can't even tell you 
Well, most of them think he was teaching. Oh, he was teaching the New Testament. He was teaching uh, 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 parts of the Old Testament. No, he was teaching the Torah, the Tanakh. That's what he had. That's what he utilized. They didn't have any New Testament at that time. They were only utilizing what they had, the Torah, the scriptures of Yah. Are you hearing me? He used what he had, and that's how they were taught. That's what our ancestors lived off of was the Torah. And so that word, that's the word he went back to when he got in trouble. He didn't have no New Testament to, uh, or the Brit Hollis to uh, get into. He only had what he had, a preceding word, which was back then, that word was still ongoing up until that moment. Watch this. In the beginning, he said, Yah created everything. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. Is that light still ongoing today? That light is still manifested. The earth is still here. The light is still here. You have the stars, you have the sun, you have the moon. So that's a preceding word. That word is still ongoing. It never stops. It's still manifested today. That's a true word from Yah. When he speaks it, you can hold it to be true. His word is his bond. He will not allow his word to return void. Let there be light, 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 light. And light is continuing after all those years. The light is still happening right now. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's a good word tonight. They only had the Torah in the Tanakh. Many of Yahushua and his disciples quoted eloquently from the Torah throughout the set apart scriptures. Torah and the precept scriptures. I just read to you Matthew 4. Matthew 4 is a precept based off of Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Deuteronomy 8 and 3, 3 quoted the same scripture. That's what Yahushua was quoting from, quoting from. But it ended up in Matthew 4 and 4. Okay, watch this here. Matthew 4 and 6. Listen at this verse says, And Yahushua said, uh, and, uh, uh, The enemy said unto him, If you be the son of Elohim, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, let you dash your foot against the stone. Where did... How Satan get that verse from? Now you have to go back to Psalms 91, 10 and 14, a preceding word. Even how Satan went back and pulled from the Tanakh and brought it up front and quoted the scripture like he was going to get some progress. But he knows the scripture. He knows the Torah. He knows the Tanakh. He understands what that book is. Notice he did. He tried to quote it to Yahushua because he knew Yahushua was a spiritual person. He knew. I got to give him a word too. Let me give him the word he used. He understands. So let me quote the same scripture. Look what he quoted. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. He quoted the scripture. Why? He had to go back to get that preceding word that was already spoken that was still manifesting. Yah's word will never run out of steam. It'll never run out of power. I don't care what the world look like. I don't care what the world is saying. The word is going to manifest. It's going to come to pass. I tell my wife all the time, I say, all you see it today is a manifestation of what Yah already spoke was going to take place. We are in the end times. We are in the end of days. This is You see everything happening in the land. You see stuff that's coming against us as Yah's people. It is taking place. Why? Because the Bible, the, uh, the Tanakh and the Torah said it would be. Hallelujah. It's real. We have to remember that Lucifer is the father of lies. So he is full of deceit. You got to understand that. Everything he does has deceit at the forefront. He first and foremost has a deep-seated hatred for us as Yah's people and the things of Yahuwah. He has always used three tactics and three methods of operation. operations. These three methods or areas cover every area of man's life. And with these three operations in play, in which he has always used over and over again in, in the centuries, now are destroying man and the earth itself. What are these three areas? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now you probably say, how did he get there going from Matthew 4? I'm going to show you. The same thing he tempted Yahushua with in the wilderness is the same things he tempted us with. It's the same thing he tempted Adam and Eve with. He only used the same three methods over and over and over again. That's his strategy. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I'm going to show you. He used these same tactics against us. Remember Adam and Eve? 
If you go to Genesis, the third chapter, let's go there real quick in the ten, uh, one to ten. I want to show you. Look at this. This is powerful when you see this. Let's go to Genesis, Bereshit, the beginning book, the third chapter. Now the serpent was more sub substantial than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, He spoke it, he, Elohim said, preceding word, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. That's a preceding word that's still happening today. It, it happened to us because at the time we ate, when Eve ate, gave it to Adam, death took place. We start dying young. Why? Because our natural man went into, uh, went into the wrong place. We shouldn't have been there. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Look what he said. He going against y'all. He going against y'all's word. You shall not surely die. For Elohim knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Look at that. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. When the woman, look what happened. Remember I told you, y'all spoke it, he saw. Hasetan through the snake, through the serpent spoke. Look what, what happened in the sixth verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto a man with her. And he did eat. He was right there with her. The Bible told, y'all told him at the very beginning in Genesis 1 that if things going to get out of line. He needed to subdue anything to get out of line. And Adam did not subdue the stuff that got out of line. And that's why we're in the predicament we're in today. And the Bible said the, both of the, the eyes of both of them were open. They knew that they were naked and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the cool of the garden. And the man and his woman hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah among the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah Elohim calling to Adam and said unto him, where are you? You don't think y'all knew where they were? Y'all knew they had got out of line? He knew they had did the wrong thing? Watch this. They went away from his preceding word. Don't eat. If you eat, you die. They went away from his word, what he spoke out of his mouth. Guess what they did? Man should not live by bread alone. Bite. Bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of Yah. If they just stuck to the word of Yah and kicked that serpent out, because he was sitting up there possessed by a spirit, he was possessed. Are you hearing me? And that serpent starts speaking to that woman that was out of line. So she should they should have put that in check. They should have put it in place, but they didn't. Boy, this is awesome. This is awesome. Let me get right here. Let me get back down. All right. Let's go back to what y'all are uh, talking to. So you see Eve. Watch this. The serpent possessed talked to Eve right out of her place of security and protection. Did he not do the same thing, th same thing to Yahushua in the wilderness? Try to get him to move his place, move out of his position. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. But I'm showing you how he used the same tactics. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He does the same thing to us. Now watch Proverbs 18. Look at this. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. What you speak, your belly going to be satisfied with it. And with the increase of your lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the what? Tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen at that last verse again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it gonna eat the fruit of it. Death and life, what happened? Yah gave them life. He spoke life to them and said, don't eat this fruit. He gave them life. He said, if you do eat it, you're gonna die. Death and life. He told them, don't do it. If you do it, you will die. If you don't do it, you will live if you obey. Here come the serpent came along, bringing in death. That's all he spoke was death. Oh, y'all didn't say that. He didn't speak that, Eve. You can go in and partake of it. Well, listen what it says. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love, Eve loved what that serpent said. Loved it, shall eat the fruit. That, uh, when she loved what he spoke, she ate that fruit. She ate the fruit of what he spoke. 
When he said it, she ate it. And the Bible said she gave it to her husband who was with her. Somebody got to tell me, praise y'all. Hallelujah. I know y'all, I believe y'all is talking to you. Let me know if you're getting that. I'm not trying to go too fast, but I'm trying to make a point to show you that the serpent only used, Lucifer only used the same three tactics. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life to get you off track. And you know, every one of us has dealt with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, what we saw, lust of the flesh, what it looked like, what we saw, and the pride of life. If I get that, it'll make me somebody strong. It'll make me better. That's what we thought. So the enemy always has tried to trick us with those things. He came against our forefathers, came against uh, our ancestors. He came against Abraham and Sarah, Joseph and Potiphar's house, Moses, King David, remember? He was on the rooftop, saw Bathsheba, another man's wife. The Bible said it was a time for kings to be at war. David wasn't in war. He was on the rooftop looking out. And he said, bring that woman to me. What happened? She got pregnant. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and he tried to cover it up. See, I'm telling you, the enemy always try to take us away from that word that Yah has given us. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of Yah. So he's coming after our past, he came after our present, and he's after our future, and he's after our relatives as well. So we have to speak for them. We have to talk for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, um, listen, there was another man that spoke, the centurion. Man, I'm boy, the way y'all gave this to me, I pray that y'all get it the way he gave it to me. I'm telling you, I see it. When he speaks a word, you got to hold on to that word and don't let no serpent, don't let no individual, don't even let yourself trick you out of the word, the preceding word. What word is the preceding word? Every one of us, watch this, have a word that Yah has given us. Each one of us have that word. And some of us have lost hope because we don't see things manifesting or coming to pass right now. But I'm telling you right now, if you hold on to that word, it will happen. Let me give you a quick testimony. I, uh, the Most High had given me a dream about a bridge coming to the area that we live in over here. And he gave me a word in my dream and told me that it was going to manifest. And I began to tell people about this dream. I told them that dream for over 25 years. I got witnesses in here uh, that can uh, testify to that. And I, I, I told the people that the bridge and the highway was coming. Some believed and some doubted. 25 years later, the bridge manifested and the highway manifested exactly in the spot that y'all showed me it would manifest. It came to pass. So I held on to what he showed me, even though I was called crazy. Even though people say I was out of my mind. I didn't have white hair when I spoke that. I had dark hair, black hair. I didn't have white. I had black. <laughs> so I spoke it, but I still believed it. And it happened exactly like y'all told me it would. Hallelujah. Hold on to what y'all spoke. But listen what this centurion said. I got to get through here. Matthew 8 chapter, the fifth verse. And when Yahushua was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him saying, Adonai, my servant, lied at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Yahushua said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Adonai, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Did you hear what I just said? See, some people fight this word because they don't want to hear this word. You can fight it all day. You don't have to listen to it. You can uh, uh, just vacate and keep moving. But there's somebody on here that need to hear this. Listen, he said, I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to them, this man go and he go it. another come. He coming to my servant do and he does. And Yahushua heard it. Look, listen to what Yahushua said. He marveled and said to them that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Yasharel. He said, Yasharel don't even have this kind of faith. Are you hearing that? This centurion had faith. That's an embarrassment to us. We are Yah's chosen people. And this word is coming forth tonight to tell us we got to keep speaking the preceding word of Yah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. Whatever Yah speak, hold on to it. Hold on. 
to not eating unclean food. Hold on to keeping the Shabbat. Hold on to keep the covenant. Hold on that you Hebrew Israelite that we have now been awakened. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel, but fight through. Hold on to that preceding word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I give him praise tonight. I give him praise. Can we just stop for a minute to give y'all praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, most high y'all. We praise you tonight. We glorify you tonight. We magnify your righteous name, Yahuwah. Ain't none like you. You are magnificent. You are marvelous. You are the only one we praise. You are the only one. Ain't number one, y'all. That's all it is. One, y'all. And we give you glory, Yahuwah. Hallelujah in Yahushua's name. Ah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I had to praise him because I know he gave me this word for his people. I'm telling you, it's a word for his people. Don't leave the preceding word. He said, no word that come out of my mouth will return void. Everything he speaks, it must happen. All right, now we're going to Matthew 4. Now we're going to the chapter that I wanted to get to from the beginning. I read the uh, Matthew 4 and 4 to give us a, a good layout, a good scripture reference. But now we're going to get into this. Let's look at Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Yahushua led up of the Ruach into the wilderness to be tempted. Wait, wait, hold up. The Ruach led him to be tempted? The Ruach Hakadesh led Yahushua to be tempted? What are you leading him to be tempted for? Isn't he the, uh, the son of Yah? What are you going to be tempted for? What the Ruach doing that for? Sometimes Yah leads you into places, not to sin, but to show you the place he is taking you. Are you hearing me? Yah is taking you to that place in him because he's built you up in the scripture. He just want to show you through your test that you're stronger than you think you are in him. Notice I said, be strong in Yah and in the power of his might. Not our strength. We don't, we, we don't have strength. Our strength is in Yah. Not by might nor by power, but by my Ruach, said Yah. That's where our strength comes from. So Yahushua was led in the wilderness by the Ruach to be tempted tested, and put on trial of the devil. His purpose led him to this testing ground. Whatever your purpose is, whatever testing moment you're in right now, you must pass this test. You must pass this test. There's a scripture that talks about how Yah allow us to go certain places. It was, it was need be that we go to these places. It was needed that we enter to that test. It was needed that we enter to that trial. Why? Because those things are going to help us overcome when the real heat is on. They're trying to figure out today, these heathens are trying to figure out today how we still standing after all these years. How we haven't lost our mind when we should have lost our minds. Are you hearing me tonight? We should have lost our minds. There is no other people, no other race or nation of people have uh, withstood what we have withstood and still here. Only Yah is doing this. This is supernatural. This is supernatural. Yah is keeping us. We know it's Yah keeping us. I give him praise for it. So Yahushua went on this test, the, se the second verse. And when he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. So we had Moshe that did a 40 day. Joshua, Yahushua went through a 40 day. Eli and the Messiah went through a 40 day fast. They went through this fast and y'all was getting them ready and prepped for their assignment. Every time he took them on those fasts, each one of them, you know, those individuals were going on assignment. Everyone is not called to fast that way. You have to make sure you have your, your healthy enough to go on a real strong fast like that type of fast. I know of some people that have died trying to fast like that. You have to know the right things to do. Y'all have taken me on different fasts, but I have gone a certain length of time, not 40 days. But I've gone on a number of days, but not 40 days straight. I have fasted. See, so, let, let me say this to you now. I have fasted for five years straight, but it was up to a certain time period, like six in the, uh, six in the morning, up to one o'clock, six to two, six to three. But then I come off, but I fasted from stuff all the week. That's why y'all was leading me at that time to keep uh, my, my flesh dead. So everyone can't do it. 
If you are called to do it, ask Yah to lead and guide you in the fasting. All right, so he, we see Yahushua fasted. Watch this. He had to for his assignment. That, that fasting was for his assignment. The thing he had to face through life. Look at the fourth verse. Yahushua responded. Look what he said. But let's go to third verse. I apologize. Third verse. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread. Man should not live by bread alone. Now look what Yahushua said. He responded, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahuwah. He didn't quote that from some new book. He went back to the Old Testament, the, what we call the Tanakh or the Torah, and quoted that scripture from Deuteronomy 8 and 3, a proceeding word. That word was still going. It still was manifested. It still was in play. Are <laughs> you catching me? That word was still on point. He quoted the Torah in front of uh, Hasatan's face. He said, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of Yah. Bam! He hit him in the head with it. He didn't sit up there and argue with him. He didn't sit up there and try to compromise with him. No, he gave him the word and kept it moving. Here go another one. Another test right after that. Remember, Hasatan don't quit. He tried to find an opening. He's trying to keep the, see if that door opens so he can keep coming in, keep coming in. He came right back and said, then the devil taking him up to the holy city and setting him on a pinnacle of the temple. Not that place they call Jerusalem now. We're talking about that desolate city. We're talking about the place where Yahushua said that there would not be a rock standing. That welling wall is nothing but Fort Antonio, which was a military fort, a hotel. In that, in that area, that's the wall they pray, they bound down and praying to. Got people think they're at the welling wall. No, they ain't. They made up that thing. They get people all psyched up. The real Jerusalem is in ruins and is a desolate place. They have people over there now going in, taking uh, camera shots, uh, uh, taking pictures and, and, and on video, showing you where the, uh, the real Jerusalem is. Showing you where the real Jerusalem is located. Showing you what David's palace used to be. Solomon's palace used to be. Showing you the different routes they took. This warfare is major, but the Bible said that Yaphat would be in the tents of Shem. That's our land too. All of us ours. They would be in our tents. They would be holding our place down because we failed y'all. But thank y'all for the awakening. We getting back up. We getting in our rightful place and we want our property back. We want our land back. Hallelujah. We want it back. When y'all take us to the wilderness, I pray that all of us make it through the testing in the wilderness. So we can enter in to the city of Jerusalem with praise, glory, and honor unto Yahuwah. So he took him up to the uh, high post on the city, the high pinnacle in the temple, and he began to test him again. He said to him, if thou be the son of Yahuwah, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you concerning you. And their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest you uh, at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. What did Yahushua quote back? Psalms 91. He was quoting something. Now, look, uh, uh, Satan was quoting Psalms 91. He going to try to quote the word. And what was Yahushua's response? Yahushua said unto him, it is written again. Thou shalt not tempt Yahuwah Elohika. Don't, don't tempt him. Don't tempt Yahuwah. Don't tempt Yahuwah. Again, notice right after he got rebuked with another word, trying to come in and tempt Yah using his own scriptures. See, Yah gave that word, Psalm 91, a preceding word. Her Satan tried to quote it. And Yahuwah just said, don't come in and try to tempt Yah with his own word. Try to test Yah. Who do you think you are? And right away, Yahushua... I mean, I'll say something back out of that, and he took him again to another location. Remember, he don't stop. He don't stop testing you. How Satan is coming after us. He's not going to stop testing us and coming after us. Again, the devil taking him up into exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Watch this. And said unto him, all these things will I give you if thou will fall down and worship me. If you buy down, it's going to cost you something. If you buy down, it's a price. If you look at these Hollywood 
actors, these sports figures, singers, and rappers, most of them have bowed down to Hasetan, the goat. They have bowed down to him, and that's why they got all the stuff they got, lust of the flesh, Lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I told you he used the same three tactics. That's what you see him right now using on Yahushua. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the food, and the pride of life. I take you up here. I give you everything. You bow down and worship me. I give you everything. It's all in the scripture. That's the only three tricks he got. That's all he used, that deception. Making you think he got something new. He used the same three tricks over and over again. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. If you use it on Yahushua, he used it on our ancestors. He's going to use it on us. But you see these Hollywood stars, these singers, these rappers, all of them have sold their soul unto him unto him, and bowed down and worshiped him. Uh, and, 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 and many of these folks will say, well, we know who the God of this world is. The, one, the Bible said that Lucifer, Satan is the God of this world. And they say, well, if he's the God of this world, he sure give me a lot of stuff. But you, you're not getting it today. Yes, we do. We got something. We got something. We got life. You have death. I'm bolting on you. You think you're living. You're just dead man walking. You just have a bunch of material stuff. The Bible says certain you didn't bring anything on this earth, and it's certain you're going to take nothing out. You can't carry nothing out that you just picked up. You can't carry that woman with you. You can't carry them, them cars with you. You can't carry those houses with you. You can't carry your gold, your silver, your money, your movie career, your singing career. None of that stuff is going with you. But I'd rather choose y'all and serve y'all. But look what happened. Yahushua responded and said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahuwah Eloheka, and him only shall thou worship. Hallelujah. That's the only one you should be worshiping. The devil, how Satan, left him for a season. But guess what? He was going to return again. And behold, after the enemy left, angels came and ministered to Yahuwah. The angels of Yahuwah are encamped around about them that fear him. We fear Yah, so his angels are encamped around about us. Did you notice every time our Satan came with an opposing word against Yahuwah, Yahuwah used the set apart word to respond to him. Yahuwah always used the preceding word of Yah to counteract what the enemy was saying. The Bible said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah, to the pulling out of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. What is the knowledge of Yah? Everything he's spoken over you. Everything he's spoken over me. Everything he said about us as a people. He spoke of us. We need to bring that thing down that our Satan is trying to raise up against that knowledge of Yah. Bringing into captivity every thought that comes against the knowledge of Yah and bring it into captivity. You got to lock that talk down that Lucifer comes up with. Lock his talk down with the word. Hallelujah. Yahuwah has already spoken by his word and he continues to speak with his preceding word loud and clear that the enemy will hear. The enemy knows what the word is saying. He knows his end. He knows his demise. He knows it's over. That's why the Bible says he has but a short time. He has to do what he has to do. But guess what? We need to do what we need to do. Hallelujah. Yahuwah's word is from everlasting to everlasting. The prophet Samuel spoke Yah's word and not one of his words fell to the ground. Did you hear what I said? When Samuel spoke, not one of his words fell to the ground. Why? Because he spoke only what Yah told him to smoke. Uh, speak. Every time y'all told Samuel to speak, he spoke. It came to pass. Not one of the words fell to the ground. He was a true prophet. So when you and I stand on Yahuwah's word, we bring total fear to the enemy. He cannot oppose someone who decrees and declares Yahuwah's set apart word. The book of Psalms says like this, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight Oh, Yah, my strength and my redeemer. Yah, look over our words that we speak. Look on the meditation of our heart. Let it be acceptable in our sight. So everything you speak, I pray that it's acceptable in Yah's sight. I pray that Yah receives it from us. I pray that he strengthens us. And I pray that he redeems us. 
Whatever you and I do, we must never forget to speak Yahuwah's word. Practice meditating on his word both day and night. We must speak to every circumstance, speak to every situation, speak the truth of Yahuwah's word over our entire family. So don't forget, if you say something, you'll see something. If y'all tell you to say it, you say it, and you're going to see it manifest. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's the word. We're not talking about no magic, no witchcraft. We're talking about having faith in his word. Faith in his word. When that man says, speak the word only, remember his servant was sick. He said, you don't have to come to my house. I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house, but just speak the word only. That's all I need. You don't have to go to the house. I know when you send your word out, the preceding word out, it's going to heal my servant. And the Bible said that Yahushua heard this man and said, I haven't seen this kind of faith, not even in Yahshua. But this centurion got this kind of faith. He said, when you go home, your servant is going to be healed. What happened? He was healed. Because he said, speak the word only. So tonight I say to you, whatever you do, keep speaking Yahuwah's word. Say his words, not your words. Because his word will not return void. Hallelujah. We give him praise tonight. We thank y'all for coming by and stopping by. I pray that you uh, got something from this word. I pray that you go over this word again and again. Let it resonate in your spirit. Let it reside in your heart. The scripture says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him. Y'all, we thank you tonight for your word. We praise you for everything you spoke to your people. I did what you told me to do. I give you the glory, the honor, the praise. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. So be it. Shabbat Shalom. Have a great evening. We love you.